Hello everyone and welcome back to another update for Amped 5. This update is dedicated to the speed estimation 2D filter. In this update video, I'm going to be giving you a quick overview of how the filter works and how you'll see this information displayed on your video. So now we're going to take a look at our highly anticipated speed estimation 2D filter. The speed estimation filter works by taking timing data from the video file and a user putting in known distant measurements to allow us to calculate the speed that a vehicle is traveling with the error included. There's some prerequisites that we need to make sure we cover before we use the speed estimation filter. And the most important is to ensure that you've got no distortion from your camera lens. You can see in the video here to start with that we've got a slight distortion. So the very first thing we did here was undistort. After that, we just selected the range of frames where our vehicle is present and we applied an unsharp masking because part of the filter workflow is to ensure that you select a path that the vehicle is traveling and go along. And you need to be able to select the contact point between the tire and the road. Having an unsharp mask in there just allows us to see that contact point a little bit more clearly. Once you've done it and you've set up the speed estimation, you'll get this information present. You can see here that I've got my known measurements present and I've got the calculations overlaid on the screen. Each frame will present its own unique measurements. And depending on the calculation that you've selected, you can choose a average over the full path or to display the individual calculations. Every calculation will have its uncertainty with it. So for example, the speed from start frame, you've got 27 miles per hour plus minus one miles per hour. The speed estimation filter is set up by using these tabs in the filter settings. We've designed it to be as intuitive and as easy as possible to set up. The first thing you'll do when you get to the filter is setting up your grid. The grid will be the known measurements you've got from the investigation. You'll then select the path. As I mentioned, the path will have your points where your tire is meeting the road for the frames which you want calculated. Next, we have the time tab. And for the timing data, we actually take the timing data straight from the video file itself. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this, but the most accurate is using PTS timing information. The PTS information tells us how long it took for each frame of the video to be encoded. Using this information, we can figure out the duration of a set amount of frames. One thing to be aware of, certain containers will remove PTS information, so make sure you're stream copying to the correct format. It doesn't have to re reference the PTS information, though the PTS information is definitely going to be the most accurate. But if you don't have any PTS reference available, you can choose either a timestamp or a frames per second average instead. The speed tab is where you add the measurements and overlay them on the video, which we've already set up for this video. Finally, using the ruler tool, we can take measurements on the same plane that we placed our reference grid. This is because we've calibrated the road in this video. So using the ruler tool, you'll be able to take some accurate measurements from that plane. Every calculation that you do and every input information that's involved in the calculations can be exported into a CSV document. This is a very quick overview of how the filter works. There's definitely more information available to you if you go to our blog post. And there's now a new measurements module where there'll be a lot of training on speed estimation given by our trainers. I hope you're excited to use the speed estimation in your future cases. And if you do have any queries, make sure you reach out to us.
Until next time, take care.